Welcome back to the Dooley Pace Truck Build. In this episode, we're gonna finish off the interior by deep cleaning and detailing the original 30-year-old seats, door panels, and seat belts. I wanna bring you guys in here to show you what we're starting with. Now, these parts are all original to the truck. It's a crew cab truck, so we have two bucket seats up front and a bench in the rear, as well as four door panels. It is extremely difficult to find parts for these trucks in really good condition. Uh, starting with our seat belts, uh, they are all operational and functional. They're just extremely dirty. So I've never cleaned seat belts this dirty before, so we'll see how clean we can get them. All of the door panels are in really good shape. They are starting to show their age a bit. We do have all inner window seals that we're gonna replace on all of the door panels. But this one's a great example of basically all the door panels. There's no major rips, tears, there's just some stainage in the carpet. And overall, should be in really good condition when we're done with it. Now, last up are the seats. These seats, surprisingly, do not have any rips or tears in them. Um, and they're really in good shape. They're just a little dingy and dirty, as you can see here. And, you know, we got some stainage down here and on the armrest. We are gonna need to straighten out our material, but overall, these should clean up really nice. So let's jump right in to detailing these seats. The first step to detailing these seats are to vacuum out the material as much as you can. You wanna to try to get out as much of the dirt, dust, any of the buildup in there, just so you have a clean surface to work with. Now we're gonna soak it with a carpet cleaner. In this case, I have the Chemical Guys fabric cleaner mixed with some deionized water. And now I'm gonna hit it with this agitator. Now this drill is going to agitate the material and really lift any of the contaminants to the surface so that the next step will pull the dirt, mud, debris, anything that's built up in that seat out of the material. And next, I'm gonna agitate the surface with a soft bristle brush to get in those deep cracks and crevices of the seat. Here I realized I could gain more access to the seat material if I just laid the seat back and I'm gonna to continue to soap and agitate the seat material in these hard to reach places. Now it's time for my favorite part and that's firing up my extractor. I have a Bissell Spot Clean Pro and this simultaneously sprays a stream of water and vacuums the surface. It is incredibly satisfying to watch all of the dirty water get sucked up from the surface. You pretty much just repeat this process until you have clean water coming up through the nozzle. Here I am hitting the seat with some steam. Now these are the stubborn spots that just did not want to come out with the uh, carpet cleaner and agitation process. The steam really helps break up the stain and then you hit it with the extractor again to suck up as much of the dirt and contaminants that you can. Now I'm starting on the seat back and it's the exact same process. You thoroughly vacuum the surface, then you're gonna spray it down with the fabric cleaner, agitate the surface with the soft bristle brush, and then hit it with the extractor to pull up as much of the contaminants that you can. Here I'm cleaning the inside of the armrest, which is vinyl, with some all-purpose cleaner and steam. It really helps break up all the dirt and grime buildup. And then I'm rolling the armrest material back around in its proper place. It seems like all of the armrests were slightly out of whack.
And now I'm working on the seat back and it's the exact same process. It's thoroughly vacuuming, hit it with a fabric cleaner, hit it with the agitation process, and then hit it with the extractor until you have clean water coming out of the material. And I did the back seat as well, and here is the finished product before it dried. And the seats are pretty much done. They cleaned up pretty good. I was able to get the armrests straightened back out. This is the driver's seat, so it is wearing thin a little right here. But overall, I think this is gonna look a lot better. And I gotta show you guys the water that came out of the extractor. Let's go check that out. Check out this water, dude. Oh, that was just from the seats. Man, I cannot believe that, dude. That's so crazy. All right, now we're ready to move on to doing the seat belts. And I'm really nervous about this because I can't find replacements for the rear, so I'm just hoping that these clean up good enough to put back in the truck. Really, the driver's one is like the dirtiest. All the other ones are pretty good, but they're just a little dingy. The uh, driver's one, though, is like greasy, so we'll see what happens. I extended the seat belts and clamped them down to a work table, sprayed them down with a fabric cleaner, hit them with a steamer, and then hit them with the agitation process which is followed up by the extractor. I repeated this process probably about 15 to 18 times on this driver's seat belt, but it was well worth it because the results were astonishing. Check out the results. Wow. These were nearly covered in grease and was just almost completely a different color. Look at how clean these are. These came out so good. Now, granted, I did make about 15 to 20 passes to make it work and had to step up my strength in cleaner, but I think it was well worth it. There was one spot right here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. I could not get that out. And then there was another spot. There was this spot right here that I could not get out, but I am very happy with these results. So now I think the rest of these are gonna clean up really well. Let's go ahead and knock these out. Got all of the seat belts done and they look really good. Most of the dirt buildup was gonna obviously be around the buckle here, but I'm really happy with these. Uh, we're gonna do the door panels next, but first I wanna show you guys these seats. So I think I went a little too aggressive on the agitation portion of the seat cleaning. Um, if we look here, you can kind of see the material is raised up a bit. It's really, really tough to see. There you go, that's a good shot. So uh, what I did was I took a, a fabric shaver, which is uh, just this right here, and ran it over the material. So I did this half of the seat. I haven't done this half yet but you can kind of see the difference. So if you look really close, you see it looks a little more pilled, I guess you could say. And then here it looks a little more uniform. Um, this fabric shaver is just gonna take a little bit of material off of the fabric and it's gonna get rid of these high spots here. Another thing I noticed is there's some staining that came back through. So all I did was spray the seat down with a carpet cleaning solution, the same solution I used to clean the seats to begin with, and then uh, rubbed it down with a microfiber towel, and that seems to have taken care of it. So um, like right here was pretty bad on this seat, and it's cleaned up really, really nice. So the approach on the door panels, um, we're gonna be a little more gentle with them. We'll spray them down with a fabric solution, and then wipe it uh, or agitate it with the hand brush with soft bristles, then do our extraction, and that should be plenty to get this dirt buildup out of the door panels.
These door panels came out really nice. I was a little less aggressive on this material, the velour material, and uh, it still pretty much looks the same. So I think just agitating that material lifts the fibers, but everything matches, so that's good. Uh, carpet came out really nice. The plastics cleaned up really well too on the front door panels. Uh, down in here, it was really, really dirty but these are clean and ready to go. So the next step is to throw on the window felts. The original window felt stapled to the door panel and I don't have a staple gun that's gonna do the trick. So I tried something out. This is one of the rear door panels and I already installed the window felt. So instead of using a staple, I actually used rivets and got it about where I wanted it, pre-drilled my hole and just put a little rivet in there with, I don't know if you could see this, but there's a washer on the back side. This cardboard is a little brittle, so when that rivet pinches and is supposed to create that clamping force, it actually will pull through the cardboard, ask me how I know. So I put, I put a little washer on the bottom of that rivet, so when the rivet actually spreads out, it has something to clamp onto, so it's on there nice and tight. Now we just have to do the rest of the door panels. Now it's time to put on our armrest. So I gotta show you guys a hack that I figured out. So if you wanna reuse your original armrest, you know that there are these tabs, guide tabs, usually on the back of the armrest to secure to the door panel, just like this one right here. Well, with 30 year old plastic, they usually break just like this one did. So I pre-drilled an eighth inch hole and grabbed a self-tapping screw to secure it to the back of the door panel, as you see here. I used a self-tapper in these holes, and actually this guide pin survived, so we just used a push lock like it came from the factory, and that securely fastened the armrest to the door panel. It's not easy doing this as one person. I don't want to scratch my paint. Sorry if there's a lot of background noise, guys and gals. My neighborhood is very busy today. Neighbor's doing his roof. Oop. And I'm getting some other work done. So what I'm doing here is putting the seat in, making sure that it clears the amp. Then we can secure the amp and secure our seat. Let's take a peek here. Okay, yeah, it does hit a little bit. That was what I was afraid of. That's okay, that's why we did not secure it. Oh, it's the photo op, gotta take a picture. So it feels like it's hitting the sub box a little too. Let's flip this up. Yeah, a little bit, not bad. Oh yeah, it's good, that's good. This is on the holes. Okay, so I think that's where the amp's gonna be. I'll double check this side over here, secure the amp down, and then we can put our seat back in the truck. Yeah. There's a little gap to the, the bottom of the center console to the carpet. <clears throat> I did cut where the feet of the center console were gonna be, but it is just a slight gap. I mean, if you really wanted to, to get, it, get it right, you could cut the carpet right here, lift it up, and then fill that gap in right there, if you could see my fingers with some kind of uh, jute batting or something. But you know what? It doesn't really bother me that much because you're not really gonna see it. All right, let's finish putting this center console together.
I think it's worth noting, you don't have to disassemble the entire center console to take it out of the truck. You can simply remove the cup holders at the front to access those two bolts. And then there's an access panel in the rear to access the rear bolts. Have to give everything a good wipe down when we're all done. Just been in the garage, getting all dirty. All right, center console is done. Lift with your back. Lift with your back. When I got the truck, there was a bunch of wiring issues. And one of those issues was that the power windows and the power seat and power locks did not work. I've gotten the power windows to work. I've gotten the power locks to work. So now let's see if we can get the power seat to work. I just plugged it up. Oh yeah, baby. That is friggin' sweet. All right. Well, now that we got the seats in, we can put in our new LMC truck glass. So the first thing we'll do is take out this, uh, let's start up here, this weather stripping. This should just, yep, pull right out. Come on now. There we go. And, the back pieces of glass have two bolts that go through the regulator, but I don't think this one does. Yeah, so we have to figure out how to slide this out. There's gotta be a way to take it out without, uh, I wonder if you... So in the old trucks, you kind of put the glass in at an angle and slides into the, the window track. I'm, I haven't even looked this up. I should probably look this up and see how to do it. You know what? I gotta YouTube this. I didn't really look up how to do this until just now. Um, but it looks like we gotta take off this door panel piece that's just held on by some screws. Uh, then you have your door lock mechanism, door handle, some wiring harness run through it. So it's actually probably what helped me a little bit. I'm trying, I got to do the uh, sound deadener on the inside of the door also. We'll just pop this off and see what that gets us. Uh, yeah, let's try to take this one off. I got a flathead screwdriver in here. Okay. I'm going to assume that these clips are really hard to find. So I don't want to lose them. And I'm referring to the retaining clips on the door lock and door handle. Drop that one. Oh, so close. Oh, there it is. Yes. Great success. Now we get to remove the window, which I think we could probably just roll it forward. And again, I'm just guessing. I don't really know what I'm doing here, guys. How does that look? Okay, yeah, just roll it forward a little bit. And then she should come right out. Let me switch sides. All right. Look at that. Let's go set this somewhere safe. There we go, safe enough. This gives me a good opportunity to clean the inside of the door and a ton of access to put on some sound deadening. So I'm gonna do that real quick and I'll be right back with you guys. 
What's up, buddy? Oh, that's cool. I wonder. Uh, he does have kids. They're just grown-ups. Where are there his kids? Um, let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah, they're grown-ups, bud. You want to do push-ups? Okay. Don't let me stop you, man. Here, you want to hang on to this? Thank you for asking. Yeah. Thanks. I can put it over there. Oh, thanks. I'm going to put some... Whoops. I'm going to put some blue tape over these edges here, just, just in case. I don't want to scratch the new glass, you know? I want to take care of it. Just wanted to talk about this uh, sound deadener I did. So I did the kill mat on the doors. Now on the floor of the truck, I only did the kill mat, um, but on the doors, I added this extra foam. So this extra foam helps with insulation and sound control. So hopefully that will help quiet the road noise down just a little bit more. All right. So we got new window felts from LMC truck as well. So we're gonna slide this down first before I put the door panel back on. Or the interior door panel, whatever you wanna call it. <clears throat> okay, we got that part in. So this is my first OBS, as many of you guys could probably tell. But there's a big difference in manufacturing from the OBS trucks to like your square bodies or really any, any C10 or pickup before this. Like the window has an integrated window channel, whereas in the C10s, you have to install the window channel with glass setting tape which can be kind of tricky. So it just makes it a little bit easier working on these trucks. Okay, it's a little snug up here. Something like that. Okay, so now, let's start reassembling our door panel here, our interior door panel. Okay, let me show you guys what we're working with, or let me show you guys what I did. Let me see if I can explain what I just did here. Okay, so to remove this entire inner door assembly, you have to remove the seven millimeter bolts from the outside. There's one 10 millimeter bolt down here, which is a part of this guide channel for the window. Then you come down here and you'll see we have these connecting rods that are holding the door in. There's two clips, you got one clip right here and you got one clip down on this rod, you can't see it. So there is a tab that holds this clip on so it can't slide out. So you put a flathead screwdriver, flip that up, and you can pull this clip off, pull the rods out. You detach the rods from their little guide clips here. And if you have power door locks, you just push the rod out. It's just, it's just held on by tension. Now it's gonna free up what you can do down here to get the window channel out. So once you have everything loosened up, you can push this assembly forward and that's gonna remove the front wheel from the channel. Then what I had to do was roll the window up a little bit, which pushed this whole panel down now that it's detached from the door. So I was able to push the channel back or push the regulator back to take that wheel out. Now, once that's out, you can move this whole assembly out of the way. Once the inner door assembly is out of the way, you can pick up your glass and work it out of the opening. So when I put the new, the new glass in, I made sure to lube it up and then basically reverse that entire process. But I ended up putting the weather stripping in um, after I put the glass in. So maybe it'd be easier to put the weather stripping in and then the glass, but that's what worked for me. Anyway, I'm gonna put this all back together and see if it works. Got the entire inner door assembly back in, doing some touch-up paint work here. 
just so when we get it all back together, it'll look nice and neat. Got the weather stripping set. I was having some issues. Let me see if I could show you guys what we got going on with this. So when we roll down the window and roll it up, so the glass is probably tough to see. It's about halfway between the, um, where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be over here. I don't know if you guys can see that. So what I'm thinking is happening is the weather stripping needs to relax. So we're probably gonna have to let it sit in the sun for a couple of days but I can push the glass over, get it up in the channel where it's supposed to be. And I think, like I said, once it sits there for a few days, we should be in pretty good shape. So I'm gonna move on and do the rest of the windows. They're pretty much the same process, except, whoops, I locked the door. This inner door panel does not come out. Uh, so you actually drop the window down. You can access, I think it's this hole and then maybe one over there. I don't know. You know what? Let's just go ahead and record me doing this one too. It's a little bit different. All right, I already put the sound deadener in here. So now we're gonna find these fasteners. We got one right here. So we'll go ahead and pop out the weather stripping. Okay. Probably a 10 millimeter. All right, so this one's a little different. There's two bolts that fasten the glass to the, uh, to the track. Had this sitting out in the sun for a little while. Yeah, so again, we're just getting this set in place here. I was able to get that in with some glass cleaner to help get it in the track. So again, like the window channel on this is molded to the glass already. So I'm trying to line up the bolt holes on the window regulator, which a little tricky sometimes, I suppose. Okay, so I got the window where I want it. There's really only one spot it can go because it bolts in. But now when we roll the window up, we have a slight gap to the top of the weather stripping. So I'm thinking this is the same as the front. It's that it's, the sun's just gonna have to work its magic and get that gap to close. I think we could get it to close on its own. Yeah, I think that's it. Man, listen to the way these doors close with that extra sound deadener. Solid. To finish up the glass install, we grabbed some new window felts from LMC Truck. These snap right on to the exterior of the truck. I gotta sneak this one under the mirror. Just kind of split the difference. Now we repeat everything we just did on the other side of the truck. Let's do it. Do some WD-30 on that. And the passenger side is done. This was exactly the same as the other side. There was a little gap to the top, so I had to push the window up and it's holding and, and it's getting a nice seal there now. But I'm hoping that when the sun hits that rubber and relaxes it, the windows can go up and down by themselves. Let's check out the interior of this truck now. Man, these seats came out so nice. Everything is looking really good. That dash is incredible. I mean, it is so nice to, to open this truck up and then the first thing you see is this dash looking back at you. I'll drop a card above so you guys can see the install video of that if you missed it. We also did install uh, Dakota Digital Gauges. As you guys can see, I love those things. They're the HDX gauges. And look at what I found. Holly Classic Trucks has uh, OG style floor mats with the GM logo stamped right in the middle. So I'm gonna leave this carpet protector on while we do the drop and while we do the motor work just cause I don't wanna get it dirty. Here's the back seat. Managed to find some second row floor mats, uh, eBay specials, they don't repop those, but 
Those are in pretty good shape, so we're gonna roll with those. And I'm gonna leave the door panels off for now. I do need to find a couple of small parts. So we have time before the power tour to source those parts and get them in. And I'm in no rush to put those on right now. Man, I cannot tell you how good it feels to sit in the captain's seat of this truck. Everything in this interior is almost perfect. It's like a time capsule straight off the Chevy parking lot. But I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of these 88 to 94 GM trucks? I've had a lot of people reach out to me online and tell me not only is this the ugliest truck interior GM's ever made, but it's the ugliest truck that GM's ever made. So I wanna know what you guys think. I'm gonna have to disagree with them wholeheartedly and I think that these are the next generation classics and we have to keep these trucks on the road. But I'll drop a link to all the parts we use from LMC Truck below. You can always visit lmctruck.com to see what they have for your project. I really appreciate you guys taking the time and watching this video. Thank you for the support, but that's gonna do it for me on this video, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Oh, sunglass holder. <laughs> Check it out. Look, it's almost done. What do you think? It's coming. I'll get a new steering wheel soon. How long is it? Oh, you just need to work on those two. Yep. Yep, just need to put these on and it's done. It, just the whole thing? What do you mean? The whole, like, part. Oh, yeah, that whole part right here? Yeah. Yep, and I'll that put that on. Part and that whole part? Yeah, that go, that'll go in there. So you can... No, no. Yeah, it's for the windows. It's not on, buddy. Oh, remember? Mm-hmm. The remember? door lock. When so everything dirty. locks. No, remember when it's turned on and we go up and down and it turns on and off? Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. What do you think? Mm -hmm. What's up, Eater? All right.